welcome everybody to another episode of the Mind Sculptors podcast. I am your host Callahan, and uh, we've got a special Friday uh, episode for you all today. But before we get into it, I just want to thank you all for joining us today. If you like this episode or any of the other episodes we do here, like the Fearless videos, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Uh, if you want access to our Discord server or just kind of want to help out the channel, make sure to head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash sculptors or check out the link in the description. So this past weekend, uh, the CEDH Deckless Database was updated and joining me today to kind of go over some of the new lists to the database as well as give our thoughts on uh, some of the stuff surrounding that is my good friend Scotty Scoots. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm doing all right. It's uh, great to... This is the first time you and I have been on the podcast together. Um, So I'm really excited about that. Uh, Yeah, me too. Also joining us today is member of Into the North. So uh, my, I don't know that I would call you my yeah, good friend. I was friend. about to I would say. say my 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 acquaintance person that I deal with, uh, Morgan, otherwise known as Spleen Face Spleen. How you doing? I'm today? doing excellently, and I'm happy to be here. Yeah, well, I don't know that I'd say it's a pleasure to have you, but you know, it, it's I, I'm excited to hear your opinion at the very least. So, well, I can I can feel the love in <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love you, Spleen. Um. So, like I said, uh, the Brewer's Corner got updated as well as uh, some new additions to the main page of the CEDH Deckless database. A couple little uh, cool things with this. Got to give a shout out, first of all, to Phoenix and uh, Charles uh, for Phoenix's Phoenix and Gustav's Prosper list made it onto the Brewer's Corner. And uh, Phoenix, or uh, what is it, Charles's Elish Norn stacks list made it onto the Brewer's Corner, which is exciting. Congrats, guys. Um, but otherwise, uh, Scotty, what are your kind of thoughts on this update? Any standout lists, card decks that, or, uh, decks that you're particularly excited about or kind of like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, there are decks that I'm excited about, and I'm kind of excited on a weird axis as far as CEDH goes because I'm the I'm the weirdo who plays like the off meta decks. So like, yeah. uh, Chatterfang's acceptance to the Brewers to the Brewers Corner <laughs> makes me pretty happy. Um, uh, all Grist. four iterations of Cody are kind of uh, kind of there and the like that, and I like seeing more Dargo. Uh, I play a list with Dargo. I really like Dargo. Yeah. Uh, and, and um, you know, uh, Grist, Grist didn't thrill me. I think the deck's probably fine. I just haven't. I don't know much about it. Uh, I'm very excited to see uh, some of the hard stacks decks that kind of made it. Like, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I think Timna Kamal and uh, Doretti and the uh, Esper Humility deck kind of uh, yeah. check my boxes for sure. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I I think it's uh, I thought it was full of some very interesting stuff, and uh, I just wanted to my biggest shout out is uh, Arkham Dagson is back, baby. Yeah, made it to the main page. Made it to the main page. Congratulations to the Brewers of Adaptive Arkham Dagson. Glad you're Spleen, back. Uh, you are a reviewer for the database, yeah. correct? So I, I just yeah, make sure further, to shoot down like any, you know, you know, any in anything that comes oh yeah, from absolutely. me. Absolutely. <laughs> like just absolutely no way. I've been pushing for Lavinia to be taken off the database for months now. I'm, I'm, that I actually I, believe. I, I, <laughs> I, I actually <laughs> have. <haven't>. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's a it's a it's a good update. I mean, uh, you know, there's lots of lots of interesting stuff we've got. You know, some new commanders. I do like seeing, um, I think this update more than other updates actually has like a lot of commanders that are, you know, more than six months old or like, I mean, I guess people are still doing stuff with, with like commander legends partners, but like even more than a year old, right? Like we've got, you know, we've got some new space being explored. Like, you know, you brought up, um, you brought up 
Ella Schnorn, um, you know, there's a, there's Some a, the yeah, there's a Doretti list. back. I mean, yeah, there's a new Tasker list. Obviously that's, uh, not like there's old Tasker lists have been around for a while, but, um, <laughs> mid power yeah Kinnon. yeah Kinnon, yeah. The, the gruel uh like snoop lists i guess maybe daryl's less than a year old but you know it's not exactly a new commander also a totally forgotten commander um so mm-hmm. i definitely i definitely like seeing that um i think you know oh tasa yeah tasa about tasa um like i definitely i definitely like uh, seeing the idea of people going back, uh, Marisol is. I mean, obviously, I'm going to say Marisol because Marisol's my baby, but uh, not in CDH in in casual. I have a, a mm-hmm. exquisitely miserable Marisol list, um, but you know, like just uh, you, you know, obviously, it did get uh, it got Asmo, uh, which is pretty good with that with that deck, but uh, yeah, like you yeah. know, it's still a, a a new space to be explored. Um, and I really like seeing that, you know, obviously people trying out new stuff, like the new cards, the shiny new toys is good too. I'm not saying people shouldn't, um, but it's nice to see people putting in work and innovation in, you know, some, some spaces that aren't as new and maybe were underexplored in their time. Yeah. Definitely. And it's also cool to see older stuff that like maybe got a new card or uh, because of, you know, maybe some people just talking about it. They were like, hey, maybe I should try brewing around this and decided to pick up the the commander. Like, I mean, what is it? Marcel, for instance, is what, from 2017? Commander 2017. Yeah, 2017. Yeah. He was an alt commander. I have I yeah, he all was. three of those commanders built, actually. Very pretty cool. cool. So um, kind of going through some of these, which ones do you think are like the standout new additions that, um, you know, Scotty, for you, you think are probably really solid decks? We all know Kate Cody uh, is very good <laughs> winning tier one con. Uh, but, you know, other than that, you know, what are some of the lists that you're thinking are probably going to stand out? Yeah, sure. Uh, so. Uh, my, I think personally, like I've, I've, I've played against, um, Extus a fair amount of times, different Extus brews. And I think it's, it's Mardu ad nauseum with an outlet in the command zone. So mm-hmm. like it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's like an all, it has an alternate type of wind condition, which I think is neat. And, uh, um, so it stands out to me, maybe not as a deck that everyone will need to play, but uh, as a cool one. Armix Thrasios uh, thrills me. Any kind of uh, any kind of Sultai list that can do Razaketh consultation things, and Armix has removal in the command zone, so you lose white from Timna, but gain removal of problematic pieces. I think is really right. cool. Uh, along that same lines, I think the the Jorn brew, the frozen Razakats. I hadn't seen much about it until uh, until the other day. I went and looked, and like I, I think that is pretty cool. Uh, I have some questions, but I think it's a neat. I think it's a really neat list. I don't know if you've noticed that reanimator decks tend to kind of be something that I'm really into. So mm-hmm. uh, there is probably that. Uh, I'm super, super into uh, Golgari Hulk. And so yeah. uh, like uh, I'm, I'm excited to uh, check out uh, any of those lists. I think those are really cool. Uh, the the grist list I actually just looked at it when we mentioned it before and it is mm-hmm. a lovely Golgari Hulk deck, uh, which I think is probably just fine. Right. Uh, and then uh, the other deck that um, kind of uh, thrills me is believe it or not, U3 Tempo. I think is very very neat. Uh, I've played against a few different brews of U3 uh from a few different people and mm-hmm. i think the potential to draw like a lot of cards is is very neat 
in a in colors that draw cards pretty well but like it's just who doesn't like flipping coins and come on that's cool yeah so yeah i think all those decks will will have a place it's really interesting this kind of looks like an extension of the O'Connor Zinder Split deck. It even runs Zinder Split in the 99. Yeah, it runs Sakashima of a thousand faces in the 99 too, so you can have multiple usuries and Okay. Uh it's pretty neato. Yeah. In my opinion. Spleen, were there any lists that really stuck out to you as really cool, notable things that you're really interested I in? I mean Yeah, so I mean, you know, Cody, I think it's it's rare that we see decks added to the database that I'm, you know, like reasonably confident immediately enter the sort of top echelons of, of decks in the format. Um, right. Obviously, yep. it's not at all an interesting or cool deck. Like, please no. don't play it. Um, <laughs> it. It's not fun. It You know, if you're trying to win dual lands i get it but apart from that don't do it um it's not fun for anybody no, it, to play. it really is not and I, like i say this as someone who took it to tier one con it's not just because i had to deal with read testing it um everybody involved was miserable <laughs> no no fun was had um i am a huge fan of the halana timna deck um i i've always like Liked, I mean, I like Hulk. It's definitely a fun space to brew in. Um, and I like, you know, Halana being not, obviously not like a, a true sack outlet, but being able to kill the Hulk at the very least. Um, that one right. time is something that I really like as like a utility for that deck. Obviously, you know, Kodama has a lot of really powerful stuff going on too. And realistically, it is probably just better. Um, but the fact that you can do Hulk combos without having to find a sack outlet, um, I mean, that was one of the things that made, uh, that made Flash, like, such a strong enabler. Obviously, the instant speed was very important, too. I'm not trying to, you know, undersell that, but, um, yeah, but yeah, just the fact that, like, you don't necessarily have to have a sack outlet, um, if you're, like, using a natural order or something like that to cheat it into play, uh, I, I also think that, like, Halana as a punch can be extremely useful in, like, maybe some slightly stalled games. Right. Um, just, like, playing, yeah. you know, even, like, you play Timna and you play, like, some other two-power, like, hate bear or something. Like, that could, for example, if you, if you like, saved up the, you know, if you saved up your triggers and you had your... Uh, and you had the mana, you know, that could get you out of, like, a Linvala stall, like, a, like if your opponent had a Linvala and that was, like, stalling you out, or, you know, obviously it deals with things like Mind Sensor and Opposition Agent very well. Um, yeah. And so, like, I, I, I like, you know, I mean, I just like the deck, I like Halana, and I like, you know, sort of a slightly different take on that sort of Timna, Hate Bear, Reanimator, Brew Space. Right. Yeah, it's really interesting um, to kind of go through this list. There's a lot of different sort of builds. One that I saw was like a new divergent control list, this divergent sushi, uh, which cheats into play Thassa's Oracle yeah. and Leveler. I don't know how much I like. This. I don't like I don't um, like Leveler. I, I just that card is incredibly awkward to like mm-hmm. try and do anything else other than exactly divergent into it because you can't like for example if you draw the leveler you then have to uh you have to in the same turn cast no wait it, no if you just if you draw the level yeah you have to you have to no you just can't win right um you have to hard no, no, you cast. just can't win like you can't or you can't thoracal like you can't unless Correct. you also yeah, find the thoracal like if your hand is divergent yeah. transformations and leveler you actually can't win the game there's no way to have the leveler 
come into play and have its trigger resolve before the thoracal trigger, but still have the thoracal like come into play at, at the appropriate time. So like I whereas right. if you do spell seeker, obviously you need an extra mana, you have to cast the consult. But like consult, yes, it you know, it can be stopped by mental misstep. But apart from that, uh it's not exactly much more vulnerable than than divergent transformations. Right? Like it, it's mm-hmm. not it's not like oh I resolved, you know, an enchantment and then I have to cast this blue instant so I can get blasted, I can get fluster stormed, I can get it's it's like I resolved a you know you lose to mental misstep theoretically. Um but it's just right. so much less bad if you draw the piece. And you can also yeah, like it's it's much cleaner to like try and enable with something like a neo form or uh or or something like that. Without having to, you know, right. exile your library and then pray that the Thassa's Oracle resolves. Right. Now, uh what was it? Divergent control used to be a deck on the database, um, but it's since been moved to outdated and that one did what was it? Notion Thief and Whirlpool Warrior? Well, so there was that. There was yeah. also the was I think one. then uh some people swapped to uh Niv and Tandem Lookout, uh, Tandem which was lookout. nice because yeah. you didn't lose to uh to like you could play like a curse totem effect, so you could I mean obviously you don't necessarily want to do that in a Thrasios deck. Um right, but right. like uh that was that was a pile um th- there have been a bunch of different piles for this um my favorite like a meme pile that i've that i've seen was it it's not great with divergent specifically because it doesn't uh win at instant speed but um you can do uh urza and tidespout tyrant and just like any <laughs> like any mana rocks just win you the game um right which is kind of funny uh, it's cheap. But, but yeah, like it, it's I mean, you're playing a four color consult Nas deck and, and obviously you lose. Yeah. I mean, Dockside is a big one. Not playing dorks, I think, is at least like pretty big one. At, the yeah, at least side, like right? at least the even if you don't play like the the, the just green dorks like Lana or Elf and Co. Not playing like birds and Deathrite Shaman and, and Iggy is definitely like a hit to that deck. But it's I mean, like four color even with a restriction like that, you know, four color consult Nas is only going to be so bad. Yeah. Right. Four color soup has a pretty high floor. Uh, outside of that, um, it's kind of interesting. I know we were, we were talking about the Asika Jeskai ascendancy list beforehand. Um, you had mentioned the, um, Marisol list and the humility list. I, I want to get your opinions on one list. And this was one that I, we had talked about uh, Pongo Cobble and I as uh, something we expected to kind of see take place is the Minsk Hulk deck. Yeah. Um, and so there's some cards in this. So I don't, I, I don't do all the brewing for these things. Right. You know, I just kind of see it. I'm like, Oh, that's neat. So, so it, somebody explained to me what some of these card choices are. And, you know, for the people who look at this and are like, all right, this is a pile of Naya cards. What does this do? Um, like, what does Gerard do in this list? Um, for you? you set up an infinite loop with Gerard and Safi Eric's daughter. So, that, so your okay. first Hulk trigger, uh, this is like assuming you have Minsk. Your first Hulk trigger gets Safi and Gerard. You sack Safi targeting Gerard. You sack the Gerard, Safi brings it back to play, you get back Safi and your Hulk, uh, and then you can just loop, like, you could literally loop, like, a Mog Fanatic, or I, I haven't taken a close look at the list, it's probably, okay, it looks like the version of the list that's on the database is doing Ember Hauler, um, I guess making mana, potentially with Dockside, or Tinder Wall, um, so that's, yeah, what that accomplishes. Is there an Ember Hauler? In yes. This? Yes. Yes. Interesting. Depending on how you sort it, um, it might be between the Dranith Magistrate and the Grand Abolisher. If you sort by CMC, oh, then, yes. then Mana Cost. If you okay, or All sorry, right. name okay. the Mana Cost. Sorting is what was killing it's me. Between gotcha. okay. Elvish Spirit Guide and Emil alphabetically. Um, yeah, yeah. 
So so that's Gerard is like how you enable the multi hulk pile. Gotcha. Okay. And you just have the sack outlet effectively in the command. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, that's like my least favorite part about that whole thing. Okay. Um, I, I, th- sack outlets that are sorcery speed and have to target are like not really sack outlets in my book. Right. Yeah. Um, and this list doesn't play goblin bombardment or altar of dementia or anything yeah like that it, ju- it has the gargadon um which is yeah. nice uh just remember to suspend it before you cast your spell under rule of law kids um so that's a, <laughs> it's a little pet peeve of mine uh i may or may not be remembering the mlc it's fine um <laughs> but uh yeah like I, I i think i would probably like to see one hard sack outlet that you could try and get into just to like play around that sort of thing. Um, yeah. because yeah, it, it, it's, it can be a little awkward. Um, it also means that you can't uh, like the deck plays Sylvan safe keeper, but the Sylvan safe keeper is like remarkably unhelpful. <laughs> right. Like if you, you know, if you, if you set up like your, for example, your pattern of rebirth or um, or rector, like someone could just bounce. Like you sack rector, you put pattern of rebirth into play. You activate Minsk targeting whatever you put the pattern on, and then they just bounce it. And you can't activate Minsk again because it's sorcery speed only. Because it's sorcery and then speed th- only. That goes to their hand. The pattern goes to the graveyard, and that's like historically not a problem we've seen in like. I mean, Hulk decks with black as a general rule uh, or like with hard right, sack yeah. outlets. So it'll be interesting to see like where that, you know, how much of that becomes a problem for this deck. Um, but obviously, you know, a Naya sack outlet pretty good. And the deck, you know, can play like a, a pretty gross hate bear game until it decides it, it, you know, feels comfortable to go to go for the win. So I'm imagining that, you know, this deck will be reasonably successful. It doesn't right. even play the hate bears, so is the thing. I mean, I guess it's this that, version it, is actually pretty light on hate bears. Uh, I mean, there's yeah. a Dranith, there's a collector roof. Um, yeah, I, I definitely would not mind seeing uh, get like getting an archon in there. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, possibly even going yeah. deeper, Ether Sworn and uh, and um, well, and that's kind of the advantage of like Naya X Hulk, right? Is yeah. you get you kind of lean on those rule of law because I think to like the Tinatana deck, right. It's really leans on those rule of law effects to, you know, give them that advantage. The rule of law is a hell of a card. It's Turns really out. good. So uh, looking over to some decks that got upgraded from Brewer's corner. Um, we talked about this earlier, uh, adaptive Arkham. And so scoots, I remember when Paradox Engine got banned, we poured one out for two decks, and that was Sisse. Sisse and that was Arkham. Arkham. Yep. And uh, they're back. And you just shafted and, um, the like, dozens of other decks that were killed by that ban? No, no. P- PST isn't real. P- PST is just CST. I don't, I don't even right? mean that. I mean, like, every low-color Storm deck, like, all the Rakdos yeah. commanders. You played Xantia, didn't okay. you, Scotty? I did play a lot of Xantia and I had a masterpiece paradox engine for that deck. Yeah. Oh. For sure. For oh, sure did. That sucks. <laughs> so um when we look at the new adaptive Arkham list, Scotty, and how this is playing, what is this deck and how is this really different from what we saw in the past? Well, I mean, with no paradox engine, with no paradox engine, we're working on uh, creating different untappers, mm-hmm. right? Like at the end of the day, uh, it's it's you're either making different untappers or uh, the other combo in the deck that I see is filigree sages and chromatic orrery. So you use chromatic orrery to make five. Right. Colorless, but you can spend mana or men of any color. You untap it with filigree sages, 
then you keep doing that and then you use chromatic or raise ability eventually to draw your deck with your infinite with your right. infinite mana um and then it also seems to be going for a, a ice crown scepter dramatic reversal combo win um so uh i the other thing that i really like that i immediately noticed when i checked into this list is it does in fact play i think my favorite heavy stacks piece god pharaoh statue uh, yes. that's that's um, dreaming too small yes everyone knows hard. spine spine of ish no, as no, well no, no, no. is in there but you know what's not in there the true tragedy oh um um possessed, possessed portal. portal that's right yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, there is no possessed portal, but it does it does run spine loops. It does run uh it does run um God for a statue. When I when I played around with Arkham after the pension ban, that was I think I was actually looking to take it to a to a two v two event, but I was like, uh, okay, here's the deal. We're just gonna we we put in um basically you would get uh you get the possessed portal and then you'd get um. Oh, what's it called? And then you know, there's a thing that there's a thing that like <laughs> makes a mer, and then you would essentially you, like you could essentially just coast. Are you talking about mer sire? No, 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 not a not a creature. Like you, the next thing you would uh. play the you'd play the you'd get the possessed portal out. You'd have a turn cycle go around, and then like you'd sack the next thing, and then essentially that would let you like keep it around. I think you tried to assemble like unwinding clock, and then um. And then Mer is it Mer Turbine the one that just taps to make a Mer? So then you could essentially just keep the possessed portal around forever. <laughs> um, but yeah, just like playing possessed portal for a turn cycle and then it coming back to you and trying to um, enable it as and then like you know then once everyone's board presence has been shredded, just trying to go for your combo is something I really like. But obviously, it is an eight mana card and. It can right. end, you know, you can sometimes put Possessed Portal into play and your opponent goes, cool, ad nauseum. And you're like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess that works. Urza Saga seems like that was a really good card to add to this deck. Um, I think that was, yeah, in most, like, monocolored decks with yeah. basically a commander costing more than two right like it's yeah pretty i've been playing it in zur and been pretty happy with it um it it surprises you how uh relevant the second ability ends up being <laughs> oh the yeah i mean especially in this deck right where you actually need yeah some number of artifact creatures i'm and there's a world right where you can not that you would ever necessarily well no never mind I'm talking out of my ass. Don't listen to me. Okay. Um, I, I'm go go ahead. I was just gonna say it is it is very interesting to me that this deck actually doesn't have like a pure Arkham combo of any kind. I'm not sure how mm -hmm. I feel about that. On the one hand, I definitely get that it it frees up like like ten slots to not yeah. try and assemble some like whatever nonsense people have. You know, it's been like I. I think before Pengen, people were doing you trying to you try and get uh, Dark Steel Forge uh, Lattice Nev's Disc set up. Like obviously yeah. that's way too clunky, but like it feels like there has to be something where uh, you don't need to find either of Dramatic Reversal or Filigree Sages, neither of which are Arkham tutorable. Um, mm -hmm. But. Uh, no, mm. filigree sages. No, it is, is. not. Arkham it's finds non-creature no. artifacts. Arkham finds oh, non-creature artifacts. Otherwise, That's you fine. would just right. get blight steel. Um, I'll yeah. reiterate. I'm talking out of my ass. Don't mind. Yeah. Me. So, so I definitely <laughs> would like to see, like, you know, I like the idea of there being and a fully Arkham tutorable combo. Uh, I guess you can yeah. kind of find filigree sages with Sitinal flute, but that's uh, that's a lot of mana for sure. Um, so I don't I like it's possible that it, it would not shock me if if the people or person bring this list put in a bunch of effort to find one and just went these are all terrible like that's <laughs> that's definitely a very I real possibility. There, I think there is in fact a section called uh, 
non-included combos. And then there are combo lines that are not in the deck as well. And I don't know if those are Arkham specific. They don't look to be. But um, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt that there is a that there was one and is no longer for sure. Right. Another uh, deck added to the database is a de- or to the main page that I'm uh, really I, I'm tickled to death by. I think this is such a fun deck is uh, the Malcolm Breaches deck that got upgraded to the main page. And I know, Scotty, you had you had brewed this at one point, correct? Yeah, I was playing Malcolm Breaches for a while. Yeah. So uh, what are your thoughts on this build of it? Um. I like this build. It does the the traditional pirate value stuff. I like to see it's I mean, it's a little different than I would build the deck, but I think that's fine. Uh, it kind of it kind of goes, you know, because it's going to make a lot of mana is the thought. So it, it plays some bigger threats like Consecrated Sphinx mm-hmm. uh, and it, it main decks in Urza, which I think is also fine. And it does the reckless fire weaver thing, which, again, I think is fine. Um it is uh, a little bit less slow to the ground than the deck that I was playing. Uh, it runs, um, uh, it runs some weird cards uh, uh, that I'm sure there is a uh, 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 a reason for in the primer, uh, and it runs arcane adaptation, which I think enables combo lines like. With Pyre with, specifically, with Niv, I think. With Niv Mizzet and Pyre and all that kind of stuff. But um I never liked the idea of needing it. And it, it the the idea of kind of needing to move towards um like arcane adaptation or uh, or pirates or captain's hook or whatever. Mm-hmm lines uh was kind of the reason that i ended up switching to dargo as my second commander over breaches but i think uh the deck is is really cool and uh plays a lot of pirates and does things that i like so i I think it's a good deck even if it even if it's just a little different than how i would build it yeah it's certainly interesting there's a lot of new specifically just blue red decks out right about now i feel like um yeah kind of those like modern like those the the like blue red modern stormless is what a lot of them remind me of this one doesn't specifically this this actually looks like it plays fairly similarly to how uh like splinter twin and modern played uh almost hmm as far I mean, as the like tempo game plan. Yeah. Um, and then just kind of going off with Kiki and Pestermite. Yeah. This uh one of the things that I do find weird about a pirate list running Kiki is it does not run coercive recruiter. Yeah. And I think coercive recruiter is kind of like a, a neat card anyway. Uh um, it gives itself haste, which is kind of goofy if it wants to. Does. Looking for a considering board, but I don't see it. But hey, if you're listening, um, Litano, uh, Coercive Recruiter is a cool card. Uh, also, f- fun yeah. fact, Coercive Recruiter is one of the very few Kiki Bottoms. I believe the only other one is Village Bell Ringer that will let you win through like a blind obedience effect. Yeah, because it, it yeah, that's actually really neat. How does it do that? Because you net triggers uh, because it triggers on every pirate. So as you make more of them, you get more triggers, which also means you can sometimes do some very cheesy instant speed wins by stealing things like like if there's a dork and a Thrasios on the board, you actually Mm -hmm. make infinite mana and draw your deck at instant speed with your Kiki combo. Um, Oh, that's fun. Which is, yeah, that's (laughs) uh, definitely a thing with in in my uh, Calamax deck. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it also, it happens to work through, uh, it happens to work through, uh, blind obedience for the same reason, because you net untap triggers, 
Um, and so you get to actually untap all your tapped, um, your tapped course of recruiters. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. That's really neat. Uh, I think it's a cool card, but yeah. So when if we, think- when we look at this update, um, and we kind of go through everything, something I know we were talking about, uh, in our, uh, private discussions has been, you know, kind of surround the, the, the language of a lot of people, uh, about the update and kind of how they feel about it. And scoots, I know you had some really good thoughts about this and how people are responding to these sorts of things. Keeping abreast of like, of like comments online and, and that kind of thing is is something that I, I I try to keep up on just because I I try to like stay fairly involved in the community and uh, it it's been a, uh, one of the things that I've seen in previous updates is uh, like a lot of disappointment by people that they didn't get on there and questions about why they didn't make the DB update and it just seems like uh, it's happening maybe more than ever now mm-hmm. if that makes sense it it seems like the frequency of of people being like very upset about that is much higher um and one of the things uh that i think is is like really important that i've seen is people uh people will say well uh my deck is cedh and uh the people at the database are wrong and I think people have kind of gotten hung up on the opinions of the reviewers and the uh, the curators of the database. Uh, but I also think that people, um, the thing that I've noticed is that is that people are are thinking that the decks on the database are the only CEDH decks, according right. to these people, where. I think if you asked the curators and the reviewers straight up, they would say, um, this is just a sampling of decks that would be like, if you had zero knowledge of CEDH and we're just, and we're just starting out, like these would be decks that they would say, Hey, you could play one of these decks and reasonably be punching at a CDH table. Well, the good news is we do have a reviewer in our, uh, in our episode right now, we do have a uh, reviewer. Spleen, is that something you would say? Uh, no, I, we're clearly the arbiters of what is and isn't CEDH, and we never make mistakes. <laughs> okay. God, um, no. So, not after the fiasco this week. Okay. We're going to get this taken out of context, I, too. Clearly not. So, first, there are a, co- there are a couple of very <laughs> important things. First, um, not every. Yeah, obviously, there are lots of decks that are CEDH that don't get onto the database for a variety of reasons. Um, one mm-hmm. of the things that uh, we look at is um, is like uh, staples in your deck. Like, are you missing, you know, cards that, in our estimation, there's really no reason to be missing. Let's say you're playing some, you know, blue deck that has a fairly extensive counterspell suite and it doesn't have a Flusterstorm in it. Like, that, you know, sets off alarm bells for us. Does that mean the deck isn't CDH? Like, no, obviously not. But... Um, we try and, you know, we try and make sure that people are having, and, and I'm not saying we would reject a deck purely on the back of it, not having a fluster storm, but, you know, as that list of cards of, you know, so-called staples gets longer and longer, and there's not necessarily a good reason that they're being excluded, um, that can be one thing, or, uh, you know, we get a lot of, I mean, people submit things like budget lists and, you know, we we don't necessarily we, we want to make sure that we we can be as confident as possible ex- if a new player came to the database that like you know and and picked a deck off it that we wouldn't be giving them you know something that you know might not work and obviously mm-hmm. you know there are degrees of that i will also you know admit to our shortcomings like there aren't that many of us i think there's like eight or nine, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, And like, what that means is that, uh, you know, 
there are some decks that are typically very easy to evaluate. Someone submits th- like Cody, <laughs> not even necessarily like that, but like someone submits the 78th flavor of Grixis Turbo Nas. Someone submits, I don't know what, what Grixis Turbo Nas deck. There's no Obeka on the database, I think, right now. Right? Someone submits an Obeka mm-hmm. deck and it's like, okay, well, they've got like a standard Turbo Nas shell. They have their like Final Fortune and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, they have like whatever, whatever meme thing, you know, like the two or three like meme Obeka cards that, you know, when the turn doesn't end, they actually become really good or like, you know, things you're supposed to sacrifice, we get to keep around forever. Okay, cool. Um, whereas like, you know, a, a commander, I'll use Orvar as an example. Um, like mm-hmm. looking at an Orvar list, if you don't like fully understand a lot of the stuff, like, the, you know, people joke that deck is full of indicates is like the term, right? Like literally just like spells that effectively say target permanent. It's draft. Chat yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> um, and so like, if you don't really get that, it's like, okay, you're, you're looking at a card like, um, oh, what's a card? Uh, like, like clock spinning, right? You're like, okay, mm-hmm. I don't know, four mana to like make a copy of a permanent you control. Like, yeah, I mean, that's not bad, but whatever. And then it's like, oh, then you realize, uh, then you realize, oh, wait a second. Also, that can go infinite. Like, if you can find something like a Sapphire Medallion, you can copy the Sapphire Medallion and then reduce the buyback cost. So now you're just making islands for a single blue mana, and then you make infinite islands, and then you untap and win, or whatever. Um, you know, like, there's lots of things that are, that are like, very easy to miss. And even Orvar, like, Orvar has such a powerful effect that it's not necessarily, like, even that hard as things go. Um... And, like, especially a lot of these decks are submitted without primers or without detailed primers. So when you have these commanders with, like, very... With abilities that substantially change how you evaluate a lot of cards, it is very difficult Mm -hmm. for, you know, a team... Like, we're getting 200 or more submissions every, every cycle, right? We try and have two people review each deck, which means we're each doing sort of, like, 25 to 30 reviews per cycle. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and like, you know, how, how long are you expecting people to spend with your deck? Uh, and, and how long will it take them to sort of realize how all these pieces fit together, especially when you have a lot of interactions that are not obvious from a surface level or like another deck would be like, like coal as a deck, right? Like you get, you go like, okay, I get it. Skull clamp and a zero cost thing. That like that makes sense, but then you're like, okay, how you know like doing the thing where you chain you get like, you know you chain recruiters or, uh, you know you can set things up by like using using something like a mask of immolation or, uh, or the other um, mortar pod to like you you equip it mm-hmm. to your your goblin recruiter and then you go get the dock side and then you can you know there's a bunch of stuff like that that are like very not obvious when you sort of just look at the list initially um you know i often when i look at a list and i don't understand certain things i do try and goldfish it a bit um but like you know these the reviewers don't have the time to to you know sleeve up and play a dozen games on your deck um Right. And so that is one of the reasons that we really like people who submit, you know, primers that explain that sort of thing, um, because then we can go look f- for things like that. Um, but there will always be a bias towards, you know, decks that are easy to evaluate because they're similar to decks that always exist. Um, and, you know, decks that it's more easy to be confident that they're well built and that doesn't mean that, like, just because your deck was rejected doesn't mean that it's not CDH or that it's not, you know, strictly good enough. Um, there are a lot of criteria that aren't just how powerful is this deck, right? It's how unique uh-huh. is it? Is it, you know, is it exploring a space that other decks aren't? Like, does it have some sort of unique value proposition? Is it too similar to you know, other lists on the database is also a reason decks get rejected, right? Like, we just don't think we need five different variations of Thrasius to mid-range, each of which are, like, six or seven cards different. Like, okay, we right. put, you know, 
oh, this one plays training grounds and Biomancer's familiar, like crazy. Um, Wait, you mean you don't need medium screen through pink? Yeah, exactly. Like, um, so, so like the, the point of the resource is to give a cross section and just like an actual cross section, you know, anything that's not specifically in the layer you make the cut at won't be shown. And that doesn't mean it's not real or it's not an important part of whatever you're getting the cross section of. Uh, it just means that, you know, not everything can appear in, in like this one specific, you know, slice of the meta. Right. And I think that is kind of in line with what Scotty was saying, right? Where this isn't like an indictment on, particular strategies or anything except you yeah that the person who's listening Mm -hmm. you know who you are that one was personal (laughs) basically i don't want people i think reed said it really really well sick robot sorry said it really really well that it shouldn't be uh it, it, you shouldn't derive your self-worth from the opinion of the curators and reviewers of the db like you're it it's just it's one set of opinions based on certain criteria, and it's not the only location on which CEDH decks can be found on the internet. Right. So, and and speaking of which, um, you know, where what are some of the various resources? Because you know, for a long time, it was the Lab Man's Reddit, uh, like pinned post, right? Sure. Um, you know, where can people find other resources if they're, you know. You know, if you're trying to build a deck, you know, one of the things I always tell people is you go to the you go to the DB, you go to your browse box field, you look at EDA track, you try to build these different things. What are you what are your thoughts, Scotty? Well, first, let me dispose of this crying puppy who has found his way into my office. And then, uh, no, but he'll be OK. But secondly, um, there are lots of good re- resources for um, CEDH decks out there. I think you can definitely like look at the discords of your favorite content creators. I know um, like playing with power and I think play to win manages a fairly active brewing channel as well as moderately anonymous and uh, mental misplay in their patron discords. Um, the other uh, resource that is. Oh, my gosh, Max. Aww. Max. Okay, I have to put him down. Go away, Max. Okay, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Never apologize for puppy. <laughs> he's he's just he's cantankerous. Um, another resource that has been like a significant one for a long time is uh, budgetbrews.club, the CEDH yep. Budget Brews uh, website. And uh, they have a, a little birdie told me in the works they'll start um they're going to start having um four different budgetary levels of CEDH decks. So like ultra budget, mid budget, almost all the way there, and then budgetless type decks. Mm-hmm. Uh so they're gonna be starting a repository there. And uh uh the kind of the Reddit, the subreddit and the Facebook group are places you can find decks as well. Uh go at your own peril, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Plenty of, plenty of resources to get good information from. So, right. Well, and I think a lot of people uh, kind of think about these sorts of things as like, you know, you look at MTG Goldfish and things like that, and you can see the percentages that it gets played and all this stuff, and yada, yada, yada. And well, you know, we don't have as many events as those have in CEDH to really give those good numbers. So uh, a lot of the database ends up being, you know, just here are some, you know, uh, stuff that we see uh, archetypes to give a shot. Um, yeah, we definitely don't have a MTG top eight contender quite yet, but I hope that we do someday. I know that people have talked about it. It's just, yeah. that's a lot of work. Yep. Um, <laughs> yep. But, you know, as we kind of wrap things up here, uh, and we're looking at this, I know, Spleen, yeah. you, like you said, you work on the database oh. and um, 
What are just some final thoughts coming from you that you really want people to know uh, about the database, you know, other than it's very personal against everybody, you know? Um, I mean, again, I think that its purpose as as a resource is not to um, stratify by power level cleanly or make some determinations about, you know, the make some determinations about, you know, CEDH as a whole. Think of it kind of like uh, like college admissions where like, you know, they have that cut off. They're like, oh, well, if your average is below, you know, like if you didn't get at least mm-hmm. a B plus average, we're not going to accept you. So there is like there is mm-hmm. a, a floor uh, for things getting accepted to the database. But just like with college admissions, just because you meet that floor, that doesn't mean you're getting into the school, right? They look for other things. They look at your, you know, your extracurriculars or whatever. Maybe this isn't the best analogy, but, uh, you know, they, they look for. I'm picking yeah, up what they, you're They look down. for things that aren't just, did you meet this threshold? You know, they, they reject it everything below the threshold, but that doesn't mean they accept everything above it. Uh, and there are lots of reasons that things do or don't get onto the database. Um, you know, we're trying it. It is, you know, legitimately, it's very difficult spending, you know, some not huge number of minutes with a deck to determine, like, you know, a deck that's full of draft chaff to determine if it's actually <laughs> just full of draft chaff or if, right every card actually belongs there um, and how it works, how it all fits together, you know, how we think it will compare, you know, how, how we think it will fare in a meta, you know, where like there are some decks that are pretty harsh to, to newcomers, right? Like if you're like trying out some, some weird clunky combo thing and you don't know what you're getting into and then, you just come up against like a pod full of turbo Nas decks. Like you are going to have a bad time, right? It's, it's yeah. sort of like in standard, you know, when there's like a really powerful aggro deck, just like anyone trying to do anything, you know, creative or like use that like flashy mythic, uh, that, that really isn't that good. Like they just get, you know, clowned on endlessly by like the mono red or like the white weenie or blue tempo or something like that. So, like, we don't Mm want to set people up for that. Um, And that does mean that lists that maybe do belong there uh, get rejected occasionally. And it does mean that lists that meet the power threshold still don't necessarily belong there. Um, And that's that's okay, right? We're just one resource. We're, We're not trying to bill ourselves as some uniquely positioned or uniquely useful resource. Um, we encourage people to get information from as many sources as possible. One thing I'll shout out, uh, I know you said, you know, content creator discords. Um, the Commander Library Discord uh, is, uh, it just essentially has links to all of the other brewing discords. So yeah. if you're trying to brew a deck or you're trying to explore something, um, there's there's a lot of different uh discords you can you can check there you know some of them are just specifically decks there's a couple like color combination discords where people have like unified um or there's some archetype discords like there's a hulk discord and a you know rule of law discord and things like that um and so you can just find uh find those resources that way you know ask the people who have brewed in these spaces before um for advice because you know that's really more effective than finding that perfect list of all the best cedh decks and none of the bad ones and just copying a list from that verbatim um you know putting a little bit of thought into making your deck you know making your deck your own and and obviously i i'm not i mean if you want to just copy someone else's list that's fine uh if you want to copy someone else's list and then you know swap three cards that's fine um, but you know, even if you're like, okay, I think I like, you know, turbo Nas, um, but I don't know which version to play. Cause there's 78 different turbo Nas variants, which colors do I want? You know, if you go to the turbo Nas discord, uh, they might, you know, be able to ask you some questions, figure out exactly what you're looking for. Like, are you the kind of player who'll be really unhappy without blue, right? Like, like 
me personally, I like really struggle playing proactive decks without blue. I just find yeah. that like feeling like there's nothing I can do to stop somebody else from winning is like a feeling that I hate. So, you know, for me, like, I don't think I'm ever going to play Mardu Turbo Nas. Um, but, you know, for somebody else, they might like, you know, just that like super explosive low to the ground of something like a, like a Rograk Timna deck. Um, mm -hmm, right. And the people who can probably give them the best advice on that are the people who have a lot of experience with Turbo Nas. And those people, a lot of them are in the Turbo Nas Discord. Right. Now, one sure. other thing, too, uh, before I get final thoughts from Scoots that I did not know about that the CEDH Discord or the what is it? The database deck list Discord has is the mod mail where if your list didn't get submitted for some reason, you can submit a mod mail request and get some feedback on uh what to what they can improve on or re maybe some reasons why that was something I didn't know about um, be with uh, recently I got some feedback on rector fit. Uh, so, you know, how does that work and what do people need to do in order to get some feedback if they did submit a list? Uh, so there's a bot and I honestly don't remember exactly what the commands are. I believe they're pinned in the somewhere in the discord itself. Um, and mm -hmm. then what that lets you do is it lets you interact with uh, with either reviewers or admins um, in an anonymous way so that it's not um, like we don't want it to be, you know, a a personal like. You know, this person told me that my deck wasn't good and that makes me angry or like, <laughs> right. you know, I'm unhappy sure. about this. So so the, the idea behind mod mail is that. Um, it can be anonymous, and also that means if someone starts talking to you, but then they're busy, you know, the next person could come along and answer your question rather than like you just being in limbo for a week because they're like on vacation right. or whatever. Um, and, and so, uh, yeah, it's just about uh, it's it's just uh, a way to get that advice. You know, they can they can excerpt, for example, um, the way the reviews are done. Um, the reviewers, there's like a big spreadsheet, uh, and then like two or three people will write like a paragraph about the deck and, and a final recommendation. Um, and so then, you know, they can excerpt like, okay, here's what the reviewers who spent a little bit of time with the deck had to say, like, here's maybe why they didn't like it. Here's what they thought could be improved. Um, and I think that's, uh, yeah, that's obviously... If your if your goal is to get onto the database, obviously finding out why database reviewers didn't approve your deck for the database is uh, the most useful. I I would say right. that that shouldn't necessarily be your goal. Um, look, I, I'm not saying you should not try and get your list on the database. I just am saying don't tie the you know your esteem or you know, the value of your deck or your perceptions of it to, you know, what this group of 15 or so people have to say about it. Right. After spending yeah. honestly not that long with it. Right. So I uh, appreciate that spleen. I really do. And so Scotty um, here, as we kind of wrap up, what are you, some of your final closing thoughts on, uh, all the, the new stuff and here on, you know, what we were just talking about with the database. Yeah. So, so closing, closing thoughts for me is um, as someone who's submitted several times to the database and been rejected several times to the database, I know that it can, it can, it can be bothersome and it can feel like a judgment of what you've done. And it can feel like, I don't know if elitism is the word, but it's the word that I see tossed around about the database a lot. Mm -hmm. um, just understand that it is like, like Spleen was saying, it is a, it is a cursory glance at your list and, and some peeking at your primer. If there's glaring omissions that, that is the review process essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and that there is uh the the opinions of of the reviewers um 
and the curators are just that their opinions they're one set of opinions and you don't need to uh you don't need to drive your self-worth based on those from those opinions and you don't need to uh think less of yourself because of those opinions and certainly you don't you shouldn't think less of the reviewers and curators because of those opinions because opinions are are just that and everybody has them and uh eventually Insert opinions are just like buttholes thing yeah so something yeah. along those lines and eventually you will find someone's opinion who runs counter to yours and that person will be in charge of a database and yep. it happens it happens to everybody at some point um and uh beyond that uh, i thought the update introduced a lot of fun newish archetypes and uh a lot of fun newish concepts and i think it's doing a great job of encouraging people to brew even farther. And if you think that your version of a deck is a superior version to the deck on the database, then you should submit your deck to the database and find out if they think that too. I I mean, and if they don't, that's okay. Yeah. And if they don't, they don't, you disagree and you move on. Right. Well, uh, I appreciate both of you um, talking about this and taking some time to uh, kind of not only just talk about the update and some of the stuff uh, that we were seeing with that, but also, you know, some of the criticisms and going through all of that stuff. So I really appreciate both of your time. But uh, that about wraps things up for us here today. I do want to give you all a quick reminder. We are in the middle of our CEDH tier list uh, series, which will be finishing this Monday. Uh, should be live at 9 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, that will be the final part in the trilogy that uh, that series, <laughs> that video became. Um, the epic it, longer than the extended edition of Lord <laughs> of the Rings trilogy. I, I We got about halfway through. Uh, the first day we recorded and it was like four hours <laughs> and I go, Hey guys, you okay with picking this up a different day? <laughs> and that's what we did. Uh, Cause turns out going through uh, even, I think it was like a total of 36 or 37 commanders takes a lot of time. Yeah. Um, but uh, like I said, that about wraps things up. So you can, uh, Stay tuned for that. I'll also make sure to include links. The Commander Library Discord, the CEDH Decklist Database Discord, as well as CEDH Budget Brews and the database itself uh, in the description below. So if you want to check those places out, you can go and look there. Also want to remind you that if you want to follow us on Twitter for any updates about shows or things that we're doing, or also want our opinions on things, you can follow us on Twitter at Sculpty Boys, B-O-I-S, or you can find a drink direct link in our link tree in the description below. You can also find all of our mox fields in that description below as well. So if you want to follow us there or on Twitter, you can do that as well. I want to also give an extra shout out to all of our patrons who help keep the lights on. If you too would like to become a patron, you can head on over to patreon.com slash the mind sculptors, or again, check out the link in the description. Thank you all for joining us today. And from all of us here at the mind sculptors, I'm Callahan. We'll see you next time. I'm in line with the stars. I'm in sync with the earth. Ten toes deep, flower child from the turf. I never switch sides. Like, even when I die, I'm a ride for the squad. Let up ties in the hearse. I've been on a vibe kind of hard to describe. I'm in between I'm good and it's fine, but I'm tired of the grind. Then I come alive in the night to realize I'm in the middle with a time of my life. I never so packed for the stack. Never lied on the back. Got a bag from the way that I write it. Queen looking Tyson. Do that ass survive doing 80 to the house. Then I hit it to the sky. Change haters on a tirade. From my lips feel bent from the bit Take a sip till I pass out Try and get grit but it don't make sense Cause you can lose life on this fast route Yeah, turn thoughts to a cash cow I might flip that to the glass house I don't need the accolades I'm in love with the chase I just wanna eat, save a spot at the table Beast with the slap, hit myself on the map You long with the wind but we knowing that it's cap Five hour flights, couple nights at the flat To be real, could you see me making moves while I'm at I'm still on the grind, limit time when I chat Myself to the page, I don't do it for the praise, love. That's just how I'm in the glass yeah. in the mirror. Yeah, do it at me, old man, trying to pass in the fury.
the last one they hear eyes blurry but i couldn't see the ass